Welcome back, everybody. This is part two of my series where I build my Ben of Kent Ghostbusters 2 kit. If you're just joining us here on this second episode, go ahead and take a look back at part one so you can see exactly what we did. Quick recap here. Uh, first thing I did was I laid out all my parts, made sure I had everything and had an idea of where everything was supposed to go. Second, I marked out all of my holes for all the hardware that would need to go into the pack. So a lot of these were holes that would be functional, meaning they were holding something together. Um, but there are a lot that are also cosmetic, where we basically are just drilling a hole to fill in with a screw or something else that just kind of looks like it does something but doesn't actually hold anything together. From there, after all the holes were drilled out, I took the time to test fit everything together. We did a little bit of that in the previous episode with the ion arm, um, but I made sure everything fit together, make sure holes line up from one part to the next so that I know everything um, is you know, set up the way that it should be and then fix it if it's not. Uh, step five here, I did this off camera and that was to clean everything up to make sure that there's no oil from my hands or dust from drilling so that the next two steps, priming and painting, go a little bit more smoothly. And that's what we're gonna dive into in this video. Okay, so as far as the sprayable stuff goes here, we have four items. Um, the first, and I would say probably one of the most important ones, is this Homax Orange Peel Wall Texture. Um, that one is the specific brand that I would recommend because that's going to give you a pretty accurate uh, texture on the pack shell. Um, the next three, you can pretty much get whatever is your preference. Um, I went with the Rust-Oleum Satin Black for my spray can uh, for the paint. And then uh, I also have the uh, pistol grip on there. It makes things a little bit more uh, easy on the hands. Uh, primer wise, I went with the filler primer. It's nice stuff because it will fill in those small little imperfections in the tiny little bubbles. Um, the Ben of Kent kit doesn't really have a ton of bubbles on it. Um, so really the filler primer is all I felt like I needed personally. Um, the last sprayable item here is going to be your spray on lacquer. And that's gonna go on top of the wall texture um, just to give it a little more uh, protection. Uh, so that it doesn't flake off as easily. After that, you prime that and paint that, and we'll see that in a couple minutes here. All right, so we're starting off here with our filler primer. Um, if you're recording yourself, make sure your tripod's set up correctly so that you don't have it tip over like you see there. Um, basically, I'm, all I'm doing is just kind of covering all my surfaces, um, doing a couple coats of this, making sure I got a nice base laid down for all my paint to sit on top of afterwards. Um, a rule of thumb that I probably could follow a little bit better is, uh, you know, when you're spraying, obviously you want to keep a little bit further away from your object so you're not just smacking it on there with, uh, you know, tons of paint. Uh, six to eight inches works well. Um, this is what my final coat looked like on uh, all my primed parts here. So you can see that the uh, Ben and Kent kit does have a good amount of detail. Once you're done with your primer, everything's dried up, and then it's time to move on to your satin black. Okay, so. Removed a couple of parts that were off the table here because they were going to get sprayed. Uh, some silver colors, uh, but everything that's left on the table is everything that will be sprayed black. Again, you don't want to get as close necessarily as I did here with the paint. Uh, it did go on a little bit thicker than I wanted to in some spots, uh, but that's easily remedied by just taking a couple steps back and uh, maybe being a little more patient than perhaps I was here. All right, so you might be asking yourself, why am I looking at a pot of water on a uh, burner? And the reason for that is uh, in order to get the finest spray on the Homax, in addition to turning the dial all the way to the finest setting, um, you actually wanna get a small saucepan and you are actually gonna boil some water in there. Actually get it just, just before it boils um, so that you know it's nice and warm. And then what you're actually gonna do is you are gonna take your can of Homax and you're gonna set it inside of that pan um, to allow it to heat up just a little bit. You wanna be careful about how long you leave it in there. Um, not very long, 15, 20 seconds or so, just to kind of let it build up a bit of extra pressure. And the reason that you do that is because it gets you the finest possible spray, which gives you the most accurate look as far as the texture goes. All right, so you can see here, I'm kind of just testing the temperature of the water, letting that thing sit in there. Uh, prior to that, um, you can see on the edge of my spray board here that I did some tests to see what the spray would look like, um, just to get an idea of one, how the can would spray and to make sure that it was you know, set on there pretty fine. So I'm gonna let this sit in here uh, for just a moment, let that uh, can heat up just a tad, 
and once I'm basically feeling to see that the can is warm on the top, uh, then I'm gonna go ahead and start the actual spraying. All right, so now it's texture time. We're gonna come in here with our uh, spray can and uh, just start basically coating the entire surface of the pack, everything that's not taped off. Obviously the tape will block that off. Um, give it a nice spray all around. You really wanna pay attention to the size of the actual globs of this texture that are going onto your shell at this point, uh, because eventually that can will start to cool down, the pressure will lower, and it's not gonna come out as finely. And when that happens, you know, just take it back over to your pan, uh, remove the pan from the heat, stick the can in there for a little bit, just let it heat back up to build that pressure up. Sometimes if you give it a little bit of shake, uh, it can you know, get the contents going where you need them to go. Uh, but you're basically gonna cover this whole thing. It's gonna look terrible at this point because it really doesn't have any color to it. It's like very strange looking for a while here uh, until you're able to get your primer coat on. Once everything is uh, coated to your liking, um, that's when you're gonna come in with that lacquer spray and you're gonna give several coats of that lacquer to give some hardness and resiliency to that texture. The stuff is made for ceilings, um, so it's kind of flaky. You know, if it's typically gonna be up higher where people aren't reaching and you know scraping a ceiling so it does flake off, um, that lacquer is going to counteract that and give it a little more strength. Um, but it will allow it to chip just a little bit which is nice because as you take your pack around and wear it, take it to parties, whatever, uh, it will actually get some little dings and dents in there, much like the actual screen use packs did. All right, so your next step is gonna be to go ahead and get everything primed up. Same process as before when we painted the separate parts. It's gonna really start to take shape at this point because we're gonna have a nice even coat of color across the entire pack shell. It's gonna look awesome. And of course, the last thing to do once your primer is all dry and set is to then go ahead and start spraying your pack down with your satin black. The best advice I can give you at this point is to make sure that you're paying attention to all those little nooks and crannies. Um, watch your lighting because the shadows can kind of hide some spots where you might not have had paint laid in. Once everything is totally dry, and I really mean totally dry because it's going to look a lot different as far as the sheen goes once it's fully dried, um, give it a look and see how things have turned out. Uh, I know one of the things that I did uh, was there were some areas that looked a little bit extra glossy uh, to my eye, and I just simply misted a little bit of flat black on top of things to kind of flatten out the color of it. And there's also some more things that we'll see uh, in the next video that we can do. Um, to kind of dull things down and give it a more realistic, less shiny look. So that wraps us up here for this video. Um, next video will be coming a lot sooner than this second one did. Definitely won't be waiting six months on it. Uh, in the meantime, while you're waiting for that to pop up, um, check out my group, the Steel City Ghostbusters. All of our social media is uh, posted up here at the end. Uh, give us a like and a follow if uh, you know, you're into what we're doing. We're most active on Facebook, but uh, you know there's definitely some content across the board here for uh, you know all your different tastes and different app preferences. So until next time, I'm B Karn, and uh, we'll build some more proton packs.